to today's meal prep video. I'm glad that you have joined me. My name is Jennifer. If you if you are new here, um, please like and subscribe below. That really helps support my channel. For today's menu, we are doing um, lasagna. I'm having lasagna zucchini boats for myself, and my husband made himself a separate smaller lasagna. And then we are doing chicken fajitas with cauliflower. Um, Spanish style rice and then we will have the two ingredient garlic rolls to go along with the lasagna and I will be making my chocolate protein cookies. I do think that next week I'm going to make another um, pumpkin recipe with some wontons that I made last year during the holidays. It was a great low point dessert for the people who love pumpkin which I am a pumpkin pie lover. So anyway but that will be coming up next week so enjoy the video and thanks for coming along. Okay guys, we're getting ready to start our Sunday meal prep. Uh, this is all of the fruits and veggies and we usually like to start with those and just get them out of the way. I have my normal pineapple, cantaloupe, and blueberries for my lunch. I have three zucchinis here because we are making lasagna, but mine is going to be zucchini boats. My husband is going to make a small separate lasagna for himself. And then we're going to do chicken fajitas with some cauliflower rice that I put Rotel in. So that's why we have so many peppers. Three of the peppers I will dice up for my breakfast and then the rest of the peppers will be used in our chicken fajitas. And then I have my little tomato there for my sandwiches. So we're going to get started working. My husband is over here ready to get started chopping up all these fruits and veggies for me. And guys I just wanted to show y'all our little vegetable haul that we got out of our garden. These were the only sweet potatoes that we got this year. We've never done a little garden and we did not do very well this year. We have one tiny little strawberry. Do you see how little that is? It's one bite. And then we have one tiny little pepper. So we will include this in with our meal prep today since we're having to cut so many bell peppers. So this will either be in the chicken fajitas or diced in my breakfast. And then um, I'll try to do something with the sweet potatoes later in the week or next weekend for one of those meal preps so that we can use those up. But we're so proud of our little veggies. All right, so I am washing up my vegetables in the vinegar and water. Again, I just use white distilled vinegar, any kind. This is probably something I picked up at Walmart. So I have these peppers in here. I'm just going to let them soak for a minute or so and then get those rinsed off so that my husband can get to slicing those. And then I have my uh, green peppers ready to go, my zucchini, I'm going to wash those up, the tomato as well, and then I will let the blueberries actually soak for about 10 minutes in the vinegar water. They're just really dirty and letting them soak cleans them very well. So this is how my husband does the uh, pineapple, in case anyone is wondering. We bought this little plastic tool at Kroger, I think, and so he... Um, does it and it takes the little core right out and then he can just slice it into the little chunks for me. Say hi Charlie. You know I gotta give you a little shout out. So I'm ready to start uh, filling my containers for my fruit. If you've watched my past couple of meal prep videos you know that I do this to take with my lunch every week and I've got a lot of cantaloupe, a lot of pineapple and I got the best blueberries and all of these came from Sam's Club. I love the nice big blueberries so I'm excited. I think I will get seven containers, which will give me one for today all the way through next Saturday. I'm going to uh, set this up and just film the process and I'll show you what I get when I'm done.
all seven of the fruit containers filled. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill up my yogurt containers and we'll see it at the end. Okay guys, fruit is prepped. Does that not look delicious? Fresh fruit and yogurt prepped for my lunches this week. So I have seven of them. I will have one today with my lunch and then I'll have enough for Monday through Saturday next week until we start over again on Sunday the following week. But again, easy peasy. This will be ready to throw in my lunch box this week. It'll be good to go. I'm going to start working on the zucchini lasagna boats. Um, these are pretty low carb. This is actually from a recipe that I found online. Here is the recipe which I will try to link it down below. I have modified it um, because I'm not going to use full fat cheese and stuff like that. So what you need for this is a pound of the lean ground turkey breast, three zucchini which I'm going to cut in half and kind of take the middle out. You'll need an egg, some fat free cottage cheese, some marinara sauce which I'm going to split this between me and my husband so I'm going to use 340 grams it says there is 680 grams in here and I've already put that in my tracker and then I'm just going to use just a tiny bit of parmesan cheese I think that I used um, a tablespoon in the whole recipe the last time and just sprinkled it at the end over them I'm going to use fat free mozzarella cheese and then I have some fat free cheddar cheese as well and then it also calls for some spinach. Um, I think it calls for two cups of baby spinach. I'm probably gonna use a little bit more than that just to bulk it up a little bit because it is zero points and the rest of that bag if I don't use it will end up being thrown away. So I might use the whole bag. We'll see how much that is. But that's what you need and I have put it into my tracker. I'm not sure if you can see this but it comes out to three points and that is on the blue plan I don't think you can see that but again I have modified the recipe you can modify any recipes in um, the Weight Watchers app okay I'm back I'm ready to get started on this now first of all you have to preheat your oven to 400 and we're going to prep the zucchini take the middle out and then it goes in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes um, and then while that's in the oven baking, then I will do brown the ground turkey and make that mixture and have it ready to put back in there. And then you put it back into the oven just for a little while, for like an additional 15 or 20 minutes, and it's done. Pretty easy. Trying to look like you're winning I'm writing rhymes in the kitchen Soaking in moments we live in, yeah You got the nerve to be on me Faking your life for the hygiene If you got my number, don't add me Cause baby, I'm on hiatus I'm on hiatus I'm on hiatus mm. 
Okay, I have scraped the insides of the zucchini boats out and put them in this baking dish, which I just covered it with aluminum foil and sprayed it with some olive oil spray. And then the next thing you want to do, and I had forgotten this step until I read the um, directions on the recipe again, is sprinkle it with some pink Himalayan sea salt. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on there. And then once my oven is preheated to 400, I'm going to put these in and let them bake for 15 minutes. And then hopefully I can get the insides, the uh, ground turkey breast and everything ready to go and uh, put it back together. Okay, so I measured out 341 grams actually of the um, spaghetti sauce that we're going to use and then save the rest for my husband. He's going to put his lasagna together himself um, separately. So, got that ready. And I'm just gonna get this ground turkey in the skillet and start browning it and adding everything else in. So I've got my turkey browning up nicely in the skillet. And then here I have measured out my cottage cheese. And the recipe says to add the egg in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the egg. And it also says to add in a fourth a cup of the mozzarella and a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese into the bowl but I'm actually going to do just an eighth of the fat-free mozzarella and an eighth of the fat-free cheddar. And then I'm going to save the Parmesan just because I use just a tiny little bit of it because it is not fat-free and sprinkle that on the top at the end. So that's 14 grams of the mozzarella cheese. And then I'll do 14 grams of the fat free as well, which is half a serving of each. There we go, perfect, 28 grams total. So then I'll have another um, 28 grams total of each of these and the Parmesan cheese to sprinkle on at the end as well. So the turkey is pretty much cooked now and the recipe says to go ahead and add in your two cups of spinach it just says dice. I'm not going to dice it. If you've ever cooked spinach, you know it pretty much boils down to nothing. So I'm just going to add a generous helping in there because I know that whatever's left will not get eaten. We'll just kind of let this wilt down and see what it's looking like. Okay, so the spinach is pretty wilted down now. I'm going to go ahead and add in um, probably like fourth of this sauce. Mix in here and save the rest. If you've ever made lasagna, you know you kind of have to layer it. We're going to do the same thing on the zucchini boats. And even though the recipe doesn't call for it, I am going to add a little bit of extra seasoning just because the actual recipe calls for Italian poultry sausage, which would have a lot of Italian seasoning and stuff in it. And since I'm just doing the ground turkey, I need to spice it up a bit. So I'm going to go for some Italian seasoning. You can just use however much you want. I don't really have a measurement. So whatever looks pretty good. And then I love my ground cumin. I pretty much put it in everything. I know you wouldn't think that it would go in a lasagna, but it gives everything a good little kick and some chili powder as well. And I already salted and put pepper on the ground turkey before while it was browning. So I think that looks pretty good. And that seasons that up. You know, you don't want your food to taste plain, you want it to be good. So that's one reason the longer I have been doing the WW plan, the more spices and stuff that I add because I do try to use the fat-free meats and um, they just don't have any flavor, but if you add it in there, you can't tell the difference. Okay, so my mixture is pretty much done. I've just turned the heat down really low. I'm just waiting to get the zucchini out of the oven so that we can get this layered up and back in. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure the rest of my mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna do 14 grams of that. Well, that's exactly 14 grams. We dropped to 13. And you know, I'm gonna put an extra piece or two in there to get it up to 14 because I'm counting those points in this recipe. And then I'm going to do 14 grams of the fat-free cheddar as well.
perfect. That's 28 grams. And then in a separate little container, I'm going to measure out the Parmesan just so that I have it ready. But I think in my recipe builder, I just used a tablespoon of it. Um, a serving size is a fourth of a cup, but I'm going to use, I don't know, maybe 10 grams or something. I'll have to look and see exactly how much I used on that, but I will put that in a separate cup because I'll sprinkle that on the the very last thing on top. So there I've just kind of mixed up my mozzarella and my shredded cheddar. Okay, so the zucchini boats are out of the oven now. I've got my ground turkey mixture ready. I'm just going to put this in the zucchini boats and then put the cottage cheese and the mozzarella and cheese and stuff on top of that and then I will sprinkle um, the rest of the uh, mozzarella cheese and parmesan cheese on top at the end and I also have some more sauce here. So I'll layer it up and show you what it looks like before I pop her in the oven. Keep thinking that I could have done something but now I'm left with an empty heart. No making amends, no waking up beside you holding you till we forget it all how could i know there was no second chances like dominoes my life got really scattered you couldn't keep the door shut and now the frostbite's creeping in cause i've been stone cold since you left me here so come on Speak of the truth when it's tainted I fell into a big black hole It got me stuck Okay, so I have the lasagna zucchini boats ready to go in the oven. I'm going to put them in. The recipe says for uh, an additional 20 minutes and you can put it on boil for just the last minute or two, you know, just to get it a little browner on top if you need to so we will see what it looks like once I get it out okay and here is my husband's lasagna he just used the oven ready lasagna noodles and browned his ground beef and just has it layered with the same things pretty much the shredded cheddar cheese mozzarella cheese and some cottage cheese in there so I'm gonna bake both of those in the oven together okay guys as usual I'm going to go ahead and take my bell peppers that Charlie has cut up for me and dice so that they are ready for me for the week and I'm just going to kind of speed through this because this does make a loud pop but it's the quickest way to dice the peppers and okay there they are perfectly diced I'm going to grab the container and um, put it show you how I put that together and put it in the fridge and we'll be done with those okay so the way that I store my peppers is just in one of these Rubbermaid containers I do like to line it with some paper towels because um, they hold a lot of water and this will help absorb the moisture. Now I'll just put them in here and they'll be ready to go in the fridge. There you go. Easy. Alright guys, I just put both of the lasagnas out of the oven. They look delicious. We're going to let those cool and then I will plate those up in our containers in a little while. And then as a side for these, I will also be making our two ingredient dough. Uh, garlic rolls, which I think I made a video or two back, but they're delicious and the perfect side to this meal. The zucchini has set here and cooled, and I'm going to go ahead and plate them up. I'm just going to use these long um, Ziploc containers because the zucchini itself is kind of long, so we'll see how easily I can get these over in there, which basically it will be a whole zucchini for the meal two halves. I'll make three meals. And Charlie is going to plate up his lasagna. Okay, so here are the zucchini lasagna boats. I have those plated up in here and then my husband's lasagna is ready as well. These look delicious. We'll be making the two ingredient dough to go along with that. All right, we are finally working on our last meal. I have my chicken already sliced up into small little strips. We have a huge plate of uh, diced, I mean sliced bell peppers over here. 
And then, of course, we're going to salt and pepper the chicken. And then we need some fajita seasoning. I love this Badia brand. And I've got my ground cumin and some chili powder as well. I'll use all those seasonings on the chicken and get it completely done. And then at the end, I will add in the Frontera fajita skillet sauce, which this is delicious. It's very low in points. This all together makes it come out to be one point per serving for just the actual chicken fajitas. And then for the cauliflower fried rice, I have two bags of the Green Giant riced veggies. This is the cauliflower medley. I'm gonna put those in the pot and then I have a can of original Rotel and a can of fire roasted Rotel that will go in there along with salt and pepper, <clears throat> excuse me, and some of the fajita seasoning, the ground cumin and the chili powder as well. And I'm gonna get this going and Hopefully this won't take that long. I do like to season my chicken before I put it in the skillet with the salt and pepper. I need to go ahead and turn that on so that it can be warming up. And then I'm gonna kinda flip it over and then I will salt and pepper the other side as well. And then once it starts cooking some more, then I will add in the fajita, the cumin, the fajita seasoning, the cumin, and the chili powder. Okay, so I've got my chicken going. I'm actually going to get out another skillet and start my fajitas. Um, I'll have to. I'll be right back. Let me grab that skillet. Okay, so I have my chicken going. I'm going to go ahead and get my bell peppers going. I have another skillet over here for those, and get my cauliflower rice going as well. So for the bell peppers, I'm just going to spray the pan with the olive oil cooking spray. Um, and this is a lot of bell peppers. This will be a very filling meal. And then in the bell peppers, I'm just going to salt and pepper and probably put a little bit of the fajita seasoning as well. I will mix the chicken and the peppers together once they're done. But I'm really picky about my chicken. I wanna make sure that it is good and done before I add it in with anything else. I'm just gonna put a lid on that and kinda of let the peppers start to cook. It'll take a minute for that to get warm. And I'm going to get my cauliflower rice going in this pot as well. Okay, I've got my cauliflower rice in the pot. And going to add some salt and pepper. Add in some cumin, chili powder, and fajita seasoning. There's the fajita seasoning. Here's the cumin. and the chili powder. And then I have a can of fire roasted Rotel. I'm gonna put that in. And a can of original Rotel. And then we're just gonna mix this up and basically just let it warm. Um, until all of the liquid is pretty much dried in there. Then you'll know it's done. It'll really kind of look like Spanish rice in a way. Um, so I'm going to turn the heat down. It's on high. I was trying to get it warm. And I'll just let it sit here and simmer off. I'm going to put a lid on it so that it hurries up and softens up the cauliflower that was frozen. But it's real easy. I'll kind of do a taste test to see if I need to add any more seasonings. Sometimes I've gotten it too hot and sometimes it's not been hot enough and we will just eat this with tortilla chips. I use the baked Tostitos and my husband will just use his regular Santitas that he likes. So that looks pretty good. We're gonna put the lid on it and let it sit for a bit. Okay so I just stirred up the peppers. They're looking good. The chicken's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the um, 
seasonings that I wanted to. All I've done so far is add the salt and pepper. Okay, so I'm going to go in with some fajita seasoning, a generous amount. Again, you can see some things to your preference. I like it spicy. And then the ground cumin. I would say I'm adding at least a tablespoon of each. And I may add more, it just depends. And some chili powder. Probably not as much of that, probably half a tablespoon or so. And here is an update on the cauliflower rice. It's looking good. It's getting softened up. I'm just going to kind of stir it up. And then just put the lid back on it for a little while. And then once I feel like it's simmered enough, I'm going to take the lid off so that the liquid will start to dissipate. Because you don't want it liquidy. You want it to really be like a rice consistency. So the chicken is done. Now I'm going to add most of this thing of the Frontera sauce. I'm going to reserve a little bit and I will add the rest of that once I mix this with the peppers. The Frontera sauce is what really makes this so delicious. And just the chicken and the peppers and that sauce mixed together. It's perfect. My peppers still need a little bit to go. They're not soft enough yet. This is almost done. I've turned it down on very low heat and I'm just going to let it kind of set and wait on the peppers. Okay, so the cauliflower rice is looking really good. I did have to add just a little bit more of the cumin and chili powder and the fajita seasoning just to spice it up a little bit. I just don't like that bland taste of the cauliflower and if you put enough seasonings in there then you can't even tell that you are eating cauliflower. So this really just needs to simmer until all of the liquid is dissipated and it will be finished. The peppers, I think, are just about soft enough to go ahead and add in the chicken and then I'll just kind of cover it with the lid and let that um, sit together and put the rest of the fajita skillet sauce on it. And again, this will make six servings. That is one point each. And the cauliflower rice is zero. So when I eat this, I will definitely have my baked Tostitos with it. Usually three to six points worth. It depends on if I have the little bags that I ordered from Amazon and each bag is three points. So I'll have one to two bags whenever I eat this, but I should have plenty of points. This is a very low point meal. I almost forgot I need to add the rest of my sauce on there and mix that up as well. And that's it. It's that easy to make fajitas and they heat up well. It's one of our favorite meals. You'll see this definitely as a repeat, as a repeat meal. And I originally got this recipe from Lauren over at Louise Lane and I will try to find her um, video and link it down below. And I'll also uh, type the recipe out as well for you. So the chicken fajitas are done. It's looking good. I don't want my peppers to get too soft. I don't like it if they're kind of oily. Um, plus they'll be sitting in the refrigerator and we will be reheating these as the week goes on. So these are done. I'm going to cut that off and set this over here to the side and just wait for the rest of the liquid to drain off of the, or not drain, but cook off of the cauliflower rice. It's almost done. It's looking pretty good. I don't know if you can see that from that angle. But there's still just a little bit of liquid down in there. So a few more minutes on that and then this will be ready to plate up. It'll be done. And the only other things I have left to do is my cookies and garlic rolls. Okay, chicken fajitas and the rice is completed now. I'm going to go ahead and fill these containers and then we will show it to you once I get them all together. <laughs>
I got the chicken fajitas and the Spanish cauliflower rice plated up. It looks delicious. It looks very filling. There were a ton of peppers. I didn't even really realize it. But whenever I go to Sam's Club and I can get a whole bag of six peppers, they're like six dollars and something for each bag. So I wanted to go ahead and use them up this week and not let them sit in the refrigerator for a week and then not be as fresh. And then we got our one tiny little pepper out of the garden that is also included in this. So again, this is a very low point, very filling meal. It's one point on the blue plan. I'm not sure what it'll be on the other plans. I know that you'd have to count for chicken on the green plan and it's probably gonna be one point as well on the purple plan. But again, I do like to pair it with the baked tostitos. I will show you my baked tostitos here. These are the ones that I like to eat. Um, when the virus first started, for some reason, I could not find the larger bags of these in the store. So I ordered a huge box of like 72 bags on Amazon. And it's actually great because they're the perfect portion. So um, my granddaughter loves them too. Whenever she comes over, she likes this vegan queso and she will eat these chips with that queso and loves to have her own little bag of Tostitos. So anyway i will definitely be reordering those on amazon okay i am ready now to make my garlic rolls with the two ingredient dough so i'm going to make 18 garlic rolls and they come out to one point per roll which they're small but we eat three of them um, with each meal each of us do so you need one and a half cups of self-rising flour and then you need to put two tablespoons of garlic powder in fact I'm just going to go ahead and add that last little bit that empties that out and then you want to go ahead and mix your dry ingredients well before you add in the yogurt this will just help distribute the garlic evenly throughout the flour and i already have one cup of the non-fat i don't know if you can see that greek yogurt that i picked up at sam's club measure it out and then what I'm going to do is just mix that up until it's nice and crumbly and then I will use my hands and form it into uh, basically a big dough ball and then I'm going to get the scale out and weigh it and see how much I need for each roll okay so I have measured the dough and it is 488 grams so if I divide that by 18 that's about 27 grams per garlic roll so that's what I'm going to measure out and I'm going to actually spray my hands with this nonstick butter spray, which might seem a little weird, but if you've ever worked with a two ingredient dough, it is extremely sticky. And so this is a good little tip to make it easier to deal with. So I'm just gonna tear it out to zero, and I'm gonna pluck off 27 grams worth. And then I'm just gonna roll them out like this. So let me get all those rolled out and placed on the pan and we will get these in the oven. Okay guys, I have all 18 of them rolled out. That kind of worked out perfectly. Two more steps before I put them in the oven. I'm actually gonna spray them with the butter flavored cooking spray. And then I'm gonna sprinkle them with some garlic salt just to give them that little extra garlic flavor and a little bit of salt. And again, these work out to be one point each on the blue plan maybe on all three plans i don't know i'm sorry i don't calculate for the purple or for the green plans just the blue but i think they would probably be the same and these are so good okay perfect i'm going to put them in the oven i'm going to put them in the middle rack for about 12 minutes and then check on them and then I usually raise them to the top and put them on broil until the tops are nice and golden brown. All right, if y'all have seen my last couple of videos or followed me on Instagram, then you know every week I make my chocolate peanut butter protein cookies, which are one point for two cookies, two points for three cookies. They're delicious, easy to make. You just throw this stuff together, pop them in the oven for about nine minutes and then you are good to go. So I'm gonna use a scoop of the chocolate protein powder, a scoop of the peanut butter protein powder, five grams of the Hershey's cocoa, five grams of the Jell-O sugar-free chocolate pudding mix, um, 200 or so grams of the pumpkin, 100% pure pumpkin. Make sure you get that, not the pumpkin 
pie filling that already has the other stuff added in it. It has to be 100% pure pumpkin to stay low in points. I will use about 100 grams of egg whites. And this depends on the consistency if I add a little bit more or not. A heaping tablespoon of baking powder and then once I get it all mixed up I will add in 14 grams of the Lily's no sugar added baking chips. So I'm going to set you up. We're going to mix it up and get these in the oven pronto as soon as the garlic rolls come out. Okay guys, here we go. On the cookies, I'm going to do one scoop of the peanut butter protein powder. I'm going to do one scoop of the chocolate cupcake PE Science Select protein powder. Five grams of the Jell-O sugar-free pudding mix, which is probably about all that I have in this pack. Perfect. That was exactly five grams. Throw that away, and then we're going to do five grams of the Hershey's Special Dark Cocoa. And then I'm going to do a big heaping tablespoon of baking powder. And that's just going to help them rise a little bit. I'm grab a spoon. And I think that's all of the dry ingredients. I'm going to mix those together well. Okay, I have my dry ingredients pretty well mixed in here. I'm going to go ahead and add in my pumpkin, which one can of this pumpkin is 425 grams. So last week I used, I think, 215 grams. So we'll see if that actually came out to 213 grams. So that was perfect. And add in 100 grams of egg whites. I would just add more egg whites if we need it, depending on the consistency. Okay, here we go. I actually think that the consistency is perfect for our cookies. I'm going to add in the chocolate chips, which is just about 14 grams. You can count them out too. It's 14 grams or 60 chips. So, I just weigh them. Perfect. And I'm going to get my baking sheet out, get it sprayed with some Baker's Joy, and get these on there, and they will be ready to pop in the oven. And then this meal prep will be done. Oh, you hear that? My garlic rolls, they've been in now for the 12 minutes. I'm going to check those. I just took the garlic rolls out of the oven. They look perfect. They, it's, the whole house smells delicious right now. If only you could smell it through the camera. And then I have my 12 cookies ready to go on the baking sheet. It is just sprayed with some Baker's Joy. I'm going to pop it in the oven. Nine minutes is usually all it takes. Sometimes if they're a little too gooey, then I will leave it in for one more minute. But you do not want to let these cook for too long. And I will show you those when I pull those out as well. All right, I just pulled those cookies out of the oven. They look perfect. They are nice and puffed up. I did leave them in for 10 minutes today because they were super soft. So they should settle and they will flatten out and then I'll plate them up pretty easy. Okay, everyone, here are the final cookies and garlic rolls plated up. They look delicious. I will put them in a Tupperware container. I just like to let them cool off completely before I do just to kind of keep that condensation from getting inside, but they look perfect. The cookies look delicious and so do the garlic rolls. Hopefully that will focus. I don't know why that's not focusing, but they are so yummy. Thanks for joining me for my uh, Sunday meal prep video. I hope that you got some good ideas and some tips. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel. It really helps support me. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any tips or advice for me. I would appreciate it and we'll comment back, of course. I love y'all guys and I will see you in the next one.